Good jokes. Uh, thank you, Scotty, for the opportunity allowing me to preach here. My name is Nixon, and uh, yeah, I've taken the honor and privilege to preach to you guys. Uh, as you know, that we're going through James, uh, uh, the book of James, yeah. and now we're up to chapter two. Oh. As uh, last time we ended up in chapter one, we talked about uh, we're going to learn how to look at the world in upside down perspective. Right. Like we're going to learn how to enjoy in trials. Right. We're going to enjoy in suffering. But today we're going to talk about favoritism. All right. Okay. And the question about your faith. Okay. So today the title is from favoritism to faith. So uh, I've sent out previously. I've already sent out the notes to uh, the church members. Uh, so if you don't have a note or uh, someone sitting next to you, please help them to get the note through email or any way that, that you can do it. So, um, so today we're going to talk about James chapter 2. So what does it mean to have favoritism? All right. So um, from Uncle Google, it says, so uh, it means showing preference or being partial towards a certain individual or groups over others. All right. Often based on your personal bias and your opinions. So having favorites is not, necess not necessarily bad when it comes to smaller things. All right. For example, the Maroons are better than uh, the New South Wales. Okay, all right. And uh, wow, the Hurricanes is the best amongst the Union. All right, all right. AUT is better than UA. Come on, AUT. Well, I, I have to say, I have to say, AUT's um, uh, old wigs totally like smashed the UA for sure this year. So, so whether you like. And well, I mean, whether you, or, or for example, whether you like Indian or Chinese food, it doesn't really matter, you know, it's just a preference, all right? So, I, uh, well, I mean, but it actually matter when it comes to bigger things. For example, race, your color, and sex, but culture as well. Well, having preference actually can, can deceive your mind to believe into lies. True. For example, uh, some of you are really biased about iPhones is the best yeah. device in the world. Yeah. It's better than Samsung. Yeah. Right. Well, clearly the fact is the statistics show that you're not being, well, I mean, it's clearly the opposite way. All right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but the first time an apple showed up in the Bible, it doomed the humanity. All right. Well, I, I know it wasn't an apple. I know it wasn't an apple, but you, you get the idea, all right? In essence, you have to ask yourself, is your favorite the truth? Oh. Point number one, favoritism on the way you love. So we're getting into love, all right? James chapter two, verse one to four. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, he's a good seat for you, but you say to the poor man, you stand right there, or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourself and become judges with evil thoughts? Favoritism is definitely, definitely a sin. To have favoritism means it means to obey God's command. Anything that goes against God, it is sin. And the Bible equates it to being evil, evil thoughts. And Jesus showed no favoritism at all. As in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, we are out to imitate Jesus in our walk with, the, with God. Jesus showed no favoritism. He associated himself with prostitutes, with the poor, with fishermen, the old, the young, and most importantly, even the powerful and the rich. Yeah. All right? And also the unseen. So he loved everyone even when everyone betrayed him. Right. He also rebuked everyone. You know, he's not just all like fluffy kindness and, and being, you know, being, being, being nice. He rebuked everyone when they were being unrighteous. Yeah. So make no mistakes, folks. Favoritism is a sin, and constant sin will lead you to hell. So, so like, let's stick into what kind of way that we can show favoritism. All right? So, social status. 
So in above, we find that the favoritism between the rich and poor. So I love it when 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 it mean, uh, when the uh, the scripture mentions about suppose a man comes into a meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes. So back in those days, you're speaking in the context so when those wealthy ones in the Roman Empire, the Roman society, they will wear a golden uh, golden rings on the left uh, uh, on on the left hand to show great provision, which means they have abundance, right? Uh, it's like when they showing that, that means, oh, you better respect this person or you want to please them, all right? Um, and how else can we show it? Evangelism, all right? It means sharing our faith to people. So who, what kind of people, or which group of people do you evangelize the most with? How do you evangelize? Do you prioritize reaching out to the well-dressed and seemingly successful individuals? Or do you only focus on those who seem, seemingly look poor or vulnerable that you can, because they easily just, uh, easily can be brought around? So, for, well, I mean, if you, you, if you have done that, don't worry, I fell victim to it once. So at the beginning of this year, when AUT was like quite empty during the semester break, and I, I later on just exposed my spiritual state, I wasn't really doing well. I, I just like kind of like, I just, I was being questioned about, hey, why don't you have like Bible studies? Like, uh, I was being questioned about numbers. So I care more about seeing saving souls as like a job. I just completely forget about love. Uh, so I ran on those people who seemingly look like easy to be convinced or they look a bit dirty or like, you know, some, you know, kind of like uh, putting my discrimination up on them. So it's like, just, I just want numbers. And, but, it, but it just exposed me. Like, just how, just how, how like, my favoritism is so bad. Like, I'm going to abuse it into my own good. So, and how much time do we spend with people? We can look into that. Who do you spend the most time with? Who do you fellowship the most with in the church? All right. Who do you gravitate towards the most with? Let's say confession, right? Uh, who do you confess your sin with? Is it just you know the people who you uh, show sentimentality to, you? or who like uh, it's within your culture, or who you feel you feel the most comfortable with, or you be are you or are you actually being able to freely confess to any brothers or sisters at any time when you are struggling? So and also church, we have so many different types of church out there. We have and the most the. The ones like in mono-ethnic churches, African-only churches, Korean-only churches, the Anglican, you know, these nationalism churches. These are favoritism, all right? They exclude a certain, uh, they exclude the church for a certain uh, group of people. Commun community churches, they refuse to do role evangelism. They only evangelize, you know, somebody around them, their family, but that's it. How selfish that is. You, you say God is so great, but you only share with people that you think like uh, you love or convenient for you to share your faith with. So your favorites are some your favorites are sometimes not of God's. James chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? So just like the early churches back then, they struggle with pleasing the wealth, the, the wealthy ones, because they hold all the power, they can influence policy for them. So it benefits the church in some kind of way. So how do you treat people then, all right, as a church? Do you treat others based on their superficial criteria, based on their wealth? social status or appearance. So I appreciate like Ian. Like uh, one thing I noticed is like, especially during midweek that we have some uh, homeless people coming around and also people who need help who show up at church. And Ian sometimes would just be around the corner, just put him aside and just talking to them. Um, actually spending time with them and taking care of them. Meanwhile, we are just mingling with the like, people that we like. Oh. Same thing with Scotty, you know, we have people coming across online that needs help as well. They contact us like they need financial help, they need uh, accommodation. And Scott is the leader of the church. He actually had to take care of those people. And he has been doing it. Um, and and uh, like, um, 
and he actually has bring those people involved in our fellowship as well. So, and, and, and James here, he's speaking in a context in which the Roman legal system, um, it was actually uh, favors the rich. Um, we, f- we favor helping the rich because normally they can, they're the only ones that can actually give back when we need help. We choose to only love to those people that who can love us back. For example, right, we are, we are international church, right? We call, yeah, we literally call international Christian church. So definitely we have people all around the world. Right? We have people who, uh, you know, just, uh, just arrived in New Zealand and just still learning English, all right? So uh, for example, like JC, uh, Philip, even Tiffany, uh, uh, Hyde, and people like this, like they're trying their best to learn English and trying to involve um, you know, trying to like uh, be part of the big, bigger community here. And as we, who are proficient in speaking English, are we really helping them out? Are we really trying to just approach them and just, um, not just about knowing about them, actually spending time in a way to help them to improve their English as well? Or are we just trying to avoid them because it's difficult? It takes longer for us to understand them, or like uh, we're just like pretending we're actually, oh yeah, 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 but you, you don't know what they're saying. You don't ask them to repeat them. Or well, same thing as the non- non-English like, uh, speaker, right? So like, are you guys are trying to reach out to people who speak um, you know, English as the native language or speak good English? Right? And it's like uh, as a Chinese, we are like a group of people that's really bad at it. You know, as you can see, many Chinese will like mingle together, as you can see in Auckland, that they, uh, they even, they basically dominated the whole entire East Auckland, all right? <laughs> uh, they, they built up Chinese supermarkets, Chinese churches, Chinese uh, restaurants. Basically, they don't even get out of it, you know? Um, and, and they have been saying, uh, some of them, you ask them, that how long have you been saying in New Zealand? There's like 30 years, they don't even speak a single word of English. So there's nothing wrong with being mater- uh, materially, uh, materially rich, right? However, it's problematic when a rich man has a poor soul, a poor spirit. The same goes for the materially poor man who has a poor spirit at the same time. It's all about your spirit. You still can be racist even without money. Right? I just like, remember when uh, during COVID lockdown, when I was walking past Sky Tower, there was always this one islander, like uh, he's homeless and always raising the sign and saying like, screw all the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, like, literally it says that. And then like uh, every single Asian walks past by, like doesn't matter if they're actually Chinese or not, he just throwing a bunch of like uh, characters um, onto us. Well, as you can see, and how you, are, how you are with people will actually reflect your faithfulness with God. So, oh, I don't struggle with giving contribution. Uh, I, don't, I don't struggle with buying people food. But even religious people, even the pagans can do that. But are you giving spiritually? The test of Christianity, as we all have heard about this, is not about loving Jesus. It's about loving Judas. All right? Let's talk about loving a neighbor. Verse 8 to 11. If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing the right. Uh, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, your sin are and, and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. So do you really know about your neighbor? Actually, the, uh, the family who live right next to you. Do you know who are they? What is their need? Can you really help them with their needs? Uh, one thing I really want to live on my wife, Sada. Right, every single time when we go home, when we get out, like um, she always greets everyone. You know, on, in the lift, like when we get out the lift, everyone she sees like walking past by her, and our, especially in, uh, within our apartment complex. Right? And it just uh, makes me like feeling like wow, like. Every single time when I get in the lift, when I get back home, all I'm thinking is just myself. It's like, oh, I'm have enough for today. Like, you know, I just want to, like, I, I, I've spoken enough to, um, to people. I've done enough Bible studies. It's time for myself. But my wife, still, she, that's her life. That's her lifestyle for loving people. 
like she just like shares with everyone, she greets everyone. That just uh, really puts a smile uh, on my face. And also, and, and like I would struggle with like not allowing myself to feel guilty, you know. All right? And including your classmates, your your uh, your colleagues, right? Met too. I really appreciate Matt too, like um, before, like he actually bring lots of his colleagues to midweek and even to Bible talk Friday night. Same with Fata, like he brought this amazing young man, Zebulun, we've been studying the Bible with, like he's just amazing. All right? How much, like, do you really care? Because, you know, they do this because they see the neighbors need Jesus, like they did. They were not being selfish with this great gift. Then they weren't selfish with this faith. So, it's just the person right next to you. Are, you. are you being able to do it? Do you care enough to look right beside you? How about a neighbor sitting right next to you? The Asian, the Islanders, or the European, the Africans, the Arab, the, the, Lati the Latina over there, sitting right next to you right now. Do you care enough to talk to them, to actually give your heart to them? You are still a lawbreaker even when you feed them a meal but not giving them their, your heart. So, well, another way maybe perhaps this can help you is that you're going to love in the light of your fear of God. Verse 12 to 13. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Let's talk about judgment first. Let's talk about the fear of God part. So you should immediately repent from your tone, your attitude, and your thoughts when confronted by the Bible, right? Because, because remember, like when we have been confronted by the Bible, that's, those are the exactly the same words will be judged at the judgment day. So on the judgment day, our deeds and words will be revealed by God. You should think of God first when you are unwell. Not a particular brother or sister in the church. Right? Do, you live, do you live with fear of God? Let's move on to mercy. God desires mercy. Mercy refers to benevolence, forgiveness, any act of kindness, like benevolence, um, like what Alejandro just talked about. So in everything that you do, and to be brought to everywhere you go. We're definitely not perfect. That's why we need mercy from God, right? right. So, at the, very, at the very last day of our life, the amount of mercy that you get uh, for your imperfection from God, it is actually the amount you demonstrated here on earth to others. Here's a question. Do you think you have enough? Do you, have shown, do you think you have shown enough mercy to the people sitting right next to you? Well, Here's the beauty of the kingdom dates. You know, in our church on Saturday night, we encourage the brothers, and the brothers would take the sisters out or vice versa to encourage one another. Um, so God has actually given us all nations to educate ourselves with. We're going to spend quality time with people that we tend to avoid before becoming disciple. So it was a struggle for me actually. They're like uh, even though like Scotty sometimes will like uh, mention that I'll actually organize like a whole chart that, like uh, which Saturday I will take which sister out, encourage who like which sister. But actually at the beginning I didn't really want to do it because I felt it's weird. Like I have no interest in that woman. Why would I take her out? <laughs> it's like but later on I understood it was a command that I must. I, it is a way to protect our sisters from the worldly uh, temptation. And also it's for me to learn how to treat a woman in a godly way. So I did it because the Bible commands me to do it. So yeah, so in that way I learned how to love in the fear of God. So do you love, do you, uh, do you, sh do you really show the love of God like Jesus did? In 1 John chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves the brother and sister lives in the light, and there's nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. So I encourage you guys to go on Kingdom Days on Saturday night. Saturday night. <laughs> Yeah, and for the, uh, for, the, for the people who are visiting our church, try to hang out more with us. Yeah. Right? And so point number two, favoritism on your faith. A saving faith should be an acting faith. Verse 14 to 17. 
What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is with clothes or without clothes and daily food. If one of you say to them, "Go in peace, keep warm and well fed," and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical deeds, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, it is dead. So, simply saying that you believe in Jesus or Jesus is my Lord is not enough. It won't save you. As in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, to the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So, you got to hold the teaching, you got to walk the walk to be saved. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever say, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love of God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Too many people focus too much on whether they're going to be saved by God but not about what they can grow by doing God's will. So you gotta ask yourself, what can I do for God? So saying you are loving versus being loving are two very different things. Being on time for Bible talks, for any meetings of the body, and not leaving early. That requires planning, right? Planning is actually showing your love. Planning, it means to eliminate all your reasons to be unloving. Right. Are you a great servant in your own household? Like, do you like with the first one offering to cook, to clean, you know, clean up all your dishes as well, including like your, your brothers or your sisters? Are you initiating praying with one another? Going on kingdom dates? If it's all, it's not just all about encouraging the other person. It's not about what you want to do. Are you still planning your kingdom dates based on your habit, or your hobbies? Special contribution. A giving is for many others around the world. Do you generally care for the world that you say that I, I care, like uh, I volunteer for this NGO, I, like, uh, I, I'm, I volunteer this for, uh, and for that I, I post on social media saying that I want to get more attention on this political uh, conflict or like this war in Ukraine or whatever. But are you actually giving in special contribution to prioritize it so we can build more churches around the world to save more souls. Saving for conferences, right? We have a conference coming up in November in Auckland, right? And it is to embrace more, embrace more nations. People from all around the world, now world sector especially, will come to Auckland to support those who are less fortunate like in Samoa, Fiji, in our world sector. Like, are you, are you also saving up to sponsor one brother or one sister coming here? To encourage our overseas disciples. You know, like, we, 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 we are the host. We're going to show them around Auckland. Are you saving up for them to take them out as well? Or have you been spending more money on buying clothes and fast food for your immediate needs? Oh, no, not needs, wants. I mean, well, to be honest, half-hearted Christianity is actually anti-Christ. Verse 18 and 19. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there's the one God, good. Even the demons believe that, and shudder. There's no either or in obeying the Bible. You need to do all that Jesus has taught you to do. So stop. you're going to stop being defensive being com- when being confronted by the Bible like those religious people. It is child play. It is cowardice. Because so many religious people will use Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 to excuse the misdeeds and idol, being an idol. Right? So like uh, they say, oh, like, uh, you know, uh, it says we are saved by grace, you know, through faith. We only need to believe, therefore, you know, when I sin, God's going to have grace on me, they're going to forgive me. But they ignore verse 10. It says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to, good, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. It's just simply like, your employee definitely will pay you. Your employee, I mean, your employer is the one who has the money. But does it mean that you're not going to work for it? Definitely you're going to work for it. 
Right? So, um, it's the same thing as one day me and that Hanjo confronted one uh, religious guy at AUT, and um, and his first reaction when I hear like inviting him to Bible talk, which some of us we actually evangelized to him before, so he knew exactly who we are because we're quite unique, and it seems like the whole Auckland we are the only one doing this. But um, yeah, he immediately said, "Hey, are you guys from um, you know the International Christian Church?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, we are." And then like, uh, and it's like, hey, did you know that some of the teaching has been proven like uh, to be wrong by some of the theologians or you know some of the uh, well-known church pastors? And I was like, okay, well, show us the uh, show us some some passages of what kind of like teachings we're doing wrong. And his reaction is just like, oh, you know, like it actually takes a while and lots of effort to prepare documents, you know, and and uh, and I'm not even sure that you will change. So I, I'm not sure I, I, I should bother for this effort. And I was like. Wow, like if you really think that we are upholding a false doctrine, you're looking at two men about going to hell, and you don't care enough to save us. Well, it just shows you that like, if you, he, he, he I, I bet like that guy has like well, like biblical knowledge and everything like that. He believes the Bible as well, but he just doesn't act it out. You know, when it's time for him to show love, to be brave and confront um, whether like uh, the tr it is true or not, he back out. He rather someone go to hell. So are you still cherry picking Bible verses? Reading one verse but ignoring the other one. You know, loving one verse but hate the other. Why? Why so heavy using the word hate? Because in the Bible we know that hate means to love less. But loving less, in relation to God, it means to hate. Well, are you, are you still just like, you know, reading one verse? It's like, oh, it sounds so awesome. I'm going to memorize this. But when you actually do something about it, oh, no, thank you. All right? This is the same as being hot with your people and being lukewarm to, with others. You love one way, but hate the other one. The Bible mentions love 310 times in King James, King James Version, 361 times in New King James Version, and 551 times in English Standard Version. Surely you love those scriptures, but how many are you obeying? If that is the case, then you have a favorited faith. Jesus was tempted by favorited, faith, uh, favorited, favorited truth by Satan in Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 11. And he was killed by favorited truth in Matthew 27, 27 to 66. A favorited faith is a demonic faith. If you have one, you are being demonic. Then you are a conspirator of Jesus' crucifixion if you don't obey the Bible and only follow half of it. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture is God breathed and is useful, is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be fully equipped for every good work. We have no excuse not to preach the word to everyone, to all nations. And all scriptures God breathed, so you should follow every single one of them. Come on. Faithful deeds serve righteousness. Verse 20 to 24, you foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that he, his faith, his, his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scriptures was filled that says, a fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. So to be justified in God's eyes, you need to do what God tells you exactly to do. No matter how impossible it seems. Something Abraham sorry, his son, his very own son, God time to put him on the altar to sacrifice him. He did it exactly he, like he just had faith in God. Well, we're gonna we're gonna look into what kind of conviction he has like, um, um, soon. And also our pulpit here, right? It was actually like Scotty asked me to find his pulpit within like a, a week, and and he's, he's like uh, he asked for like it's gonna be costly, it's gonna be free. It's like how is it possible? 
And I was like, yeah, I was, have, I was so bitter inside. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, like, no, I believe that I must obey my leader. There's wisdom behind that. And therefore, I just being, meanwhile being bitter, meanwhile, like, I was just praying at the same time. And then, like, uh, and then just, like, I was being pressured by him. and said, like, hey, how you found the pulpit yet? Um, and then I was like, no. And it's like, no, you gotta, be, you gotta be praying, man. We need this pulpit by this week. And then, like, um, the, very, the, uh, the very next day, I decided to really repent from my bitterness. So I really just, like, today, God, I'm gonna give all my heart to look for this pulpit. Please help me. And so, like, just around the corner, I was walking with my wife, and I just had, like, that, there was a Mormon church right there, and I was just like, no way, like, this Mormon church is going to offer anything, you know, like, uh, they, it just, uh, I just don't really want to go there, go in there, but, like, uh, I was like, fine, I'll just, like, have a short prayer, and then I went in, and then there you go. And then he's like, yeah, we do have one. We don't, we don't need it. Like, I'm going get to get it to you tomorrow. There you go. We have this awesome free pulpit right here. All right. So we must have, com- so what kind of a conviction that Abraham had? We must have conviction in the followings. Disobedience against God and your leader is not a choice. God would never ask you to do the wrong thing. There's no contradiction amongst the word of God. So the Bible is consistent. God will perform miracles through my obedience. God will take care of everything if I obey. Well, this pulpit is testimony if you don't believe in Abraham. Right? So, God called him as his friend. Wow, like what kind of privilege is this? Friends are people who understand each other and they will do things for each other. This is exactly the relationship between Abraham and God. Because they love one another genuinely. And God never disappoints. Love, love is an action. It's not a feeling. Do you have a mutually loving relationship with people outside of your race? Outside of your culture? I love like, you know, falling in love with, uh, with a Latina. Yeah. Uh, it just uh, changed so much of my character flaws. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, Scotty always had to remind me that, you know, remember Saturday is your saving grace. You know, like, uh, your, your, your thing about, like, not being able to, like, just getting drank now, talking to people. There you go, like, your wife can train you through that. You know? But, but I mean, God created all nations for a reason. It's to complete us. It's to help us enlarge our love, just like how big God, uh, God's love is. He cares for everyone. And it's simply to do the right thing and be God's friend. Well, Last thing, so God actually takes pride in your repentance. It's not too late to change, guys. Verse 25, 26, our last scripture for tonight. In the same way, was not even Rahab, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging, um, lodging to the spies and sent them off a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deed is dead. Are you still letting your past to determine your future? This is very contradictory, guys. Don't do it. Are you still giving yourself excuse for being self piteous Just let it go. And move forward with God. Please, well, please consider Rahab's example. So, she was a non-Israelite. She was a pagan. And a prostitute. Who lived in Jericho in the Promised Land. Right? And, and he, uh, she actually assisted Joshua's spies. She grew up surrounded by false gods and doctrines. And, and somehow, um, I don't know the particular reason, but maybe it's by her choice or because just life happens, she chose to be a prostitute. However, as soon as she saw an opportunity to serve a different God, a God that she has learned that, um, who forgives, who loves unconditionally, forgets about our past, who will prioritize you, who eager to work on our future, she seized the opportunity with her faithful deeds, protected the spies at the risk of her life. How many of us are greeting for our life and still believing into lies? She did not simply believe she could change. She took the chance. She took the action to change. She met her faith with her deeds. Well, then she became, even like, ended up, she actually became the great, 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 uh, great grandmother of King David and Jesus. She was a prostitute. So if she can become so great, so can you. Repent for your favoritism and demonic faith today. 
with your faithful deeds. Conclusion, point number one, favoritism on the way you love. Love like Jesus did, stop being racist. <laughs> point number two, favoritism of faith, on faith. Read the whole Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. We are Bible church. Meet your deeds with your faith. All right, thank you very much.